Alrighty, yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Mr. DDG94 back with another reaction video. Today we finna react to movies movie villain versus the actual villain. This is part four four by the homie DD Conway. Shout out to the homie DD Conway. Hey man, make sure y'all go run up on his channel, run up and run them likes up and the views up and the comments up on his channel, man. You already know, man, he keeping it moving, keeping it pushing. And without further ado, man, let's get right into it. What's up, y'all? It's Didi Conway, and I'm back with another Real Villains Part 4. Thank you for all the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. We're at 7,000 subscribers now, and I just wanted to say thank y'all. I'm smoking grits and selling chickens, call that painted lemon. It's Gucci. Lemons on the chain with my knee cuts. Lemons on the chain. Coming in at number five, I had to bring Friday back to this countdown. Why? 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 Because, bruh, as we know, Bebo is the real villain and the hood menace. And he will always be a real villain, but I'm going to add another one. The whole hood. <laughs> Y'all watch Craig get his motherfucking ass whooped by this dude. First off, Smokey Soho and Miss Jones the realest one. Smokey a hoe because look at bruh face when Craig handed that gun over to his pops. Yeah, shaking your head because you know without that gun, it's really over with for bruh. And to me, it revealed that you for sure wasn't gonna help. Put the gun down, son. Man, hell nah, Mr. Jones. Fish fillet forehead ass, nigga. <laughs> no, 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 come on, baby, come on. Let him be a man. Getting choked out by a big bully ass nigga, all y'all scared of, ain't part of being a man, bruh. At this point, the man slapped the shit out of two women, robbed motherfuckers, punched the nigga for a bite. Boy, y'all should have jumped his ass. <laughs> Not stand and watch talking about. Come on, Craig. Come on, Craig. Ain't no come on, man. Sea creature looking at that nigga. Debo built like a monster. All y'all should have helped Craig. Man, shit. What Gucci say? Ain't no one on one, nigga. He's one. I hit you. Exactly. Because in real life, this fight would have ended with Craig being choked out. Realistically, that's right. Call for your mama. This man Craig had to stand up to a whole monster because of Debbie. Shut your little punk ass up, nigga. Before I drop it like I did this bitch. And that's mainly why you can say what you want. But Debbie would have had to throw that net for my pain and suffering. Fuck all that. Something else I want to talk about with Mr. Jones. This scene right here. You kids that did nothing but punks. Sissy fired. So quick to pick up a gun. You scared to take an ass weapon. Okay, I don't think anything's wrong with the message, but at the same time, something that I never understood growing up was the simple fact that they will say that about the generation that's doing all the shooting now, but we never talk about the start. And nine times out of ten, the person that's saying this to a, a young person, it started with y'all's generation. Why is that never acknowledged? It didn't just start with, with us. The guns there. didn't just start with us. A, a lot of us was born into it. Why are there so many... So many stories of old people, like for instance, my parents, my mom had a story where these guys got in a fight back in the day and one guy said, be here when I get back. Well, the other guy was and blew his head off. So y'all went from fighting y'all generation to blowing folks head off. I think it's interesting to always put a message like that in a movie where you kind of down the next generation. However, y'all don't talk about the start and nine times out of 10, it started with y'all generation, right. even with the gangs. Y'all started out fist fighting. Eventually, somebody dropped their nuts, did some dumb shit, brought a uh, gun to the fist fight, and shot somebody. Creating war for the next few years. It's always been like that from generation to generation. And I want to be clear again. I don't think Mr. Jones is wrong. I think he's 100% right. However, I would love to see a movie where the young person finally rebuttals that type of message. Especially being told something like that for years. We've never really acknowledged that this shit happens from generation to generation. And it happened in some of y'all's generation, too. Everything wasn't always about a fight in some of y'all generation. And when you got older, it probably evolved. Just like it did for us. Coming in at number four, Juice. When it comes to Juice, we all know the real villain is Bishop's serial killing ass. I am crazy. But you know what else? I don't give, give a fuck. fuck. Let's be nice. Yeah. Let's be nice. We don't have to go there. I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. I believe Bishop's friends definitely played a role in the monster that he became. They don't get 100% of the credit at all, but they definitely did contribute to it. I think that uh, Bishop was already one that had low self-esteem. He wasn't the most confident. He, you didn't see him trying to go after the girls. I think that man wanted power. 
and he obtained power through fear. Once he realized y'all was scared of him, but he just treated y'all like the hoes y'all kind of was. Going, do what we gotta do, and jet. Fuck out of here. I think that'll work. <laughs> Yo, what about the cops, man? Bishop, check it out. Even in that scene alone, I think that had they all stepped up, the three of them alone, and told him, bro, we not doing this, it would have forced him to have to redo his plan. Facts. That would that would have definitely... They didn't have to go through with that plan at all. They ruined Q's chance to really be a... He was really whooping niggas' ass in that DJ contest. Like, because them niggas in that DJ contest was two packs of ass, but still... Q was really on, on the come up, but now nah, what what we got to do is fucking group. What we got to do is a fucking group. Uh, let's go rob old man Quillis. <laughs> For what? What do you gain from that? There was nothing to gain from that. And only one nigga walked away with the money. <laughs> You, he already wasn't somebody that wanted to do it alone. This is why you kept peer pressuring the other three to do it. It went from all of us wanting to do it, to accept Q, to people starting to really come alive and see Bishop for what he was. But by the time y'all realized what he was, you realized the monster that you contributed to. Coming in at number three, Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. I love this movie. Definitely some truths in here, but getting to it, when you watch this movie, they portray Sid the Entertainer's character as the villain. Beautiful fiance, great son. Fine. I don't agree with that. They always portray Martin as the uh, as the villain. Martin was the villain because he was the one that got the least amount of love from everybody. If anything, Cedric was like that. The Cedric was getting all the love from everybody. Finally winning, man. Don't even matter that you can never beat me or nothing. Big yos, bro, cause uh, bro was arrogant as hell. <laughs> so rightfully so. However, we have to throw Roscoe Pops, and truthfully, his whole family are all the real villains. My grandson's father, Dr. R.J. Stevens. Been a long time, Dr. Stevens. Dad, that's just a stage name. Yeah, I know. You ain't seen your son in about 19 years, so instead of hugging and, and embracing your son, you decide to insult him. Acknowledge his child, but insult his name. As though he ain't doing shit in the world. But when Clyde bring his big back ass there, you happy to see him. I ain't even trying to be green when I say this, but bro, he ain't even your son. And see, to me right there, that's messed up. The embrace that you gave his cousin is the same embrace you should have gave your kid you ain't seen in nine years. Facts. It's like watching this movie back as an adult, you got to feel bad for Roscoe. Exactly. Because you know he dealt with neglect in the form of your daddy not really taking anything serious. Mm -hmm. And who would want to deal with their parent not taking their accomplishment serious? Uh... TV show is not something that everybody gets. And that's something you need to show your, your child love with. That's something you need to show them, hey, I'm proud of you. And for him to not even get that moment from him, I know that shit hurt. <laughs> I just think it's crazy that you treated him like he was the adopted one. And this happens in plenty of families across the nation. It's something that's sad to see. You make somebody feel like a black swan and that black sheep of the family. Facts. Like they not supposed to be there. And I got to put his whole family in this too, because just the whole way that they treated him and insulted him, it took him going the fuck off on his pops for all y'all to see just how serious and fed up he just was. However, his pops, the real villain. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of parents out there like that, especially fathers. You don't take what your kid do, does serious for whatever reason. You just don't acknowledge them in a way that a, a father should. And it just sucks. You pushed your son away. However, I do have to add Roscoe to this list as well. Just because you let Bianca treat your son like he was a piece of shit. Yeah. He came second in situations where he should have came first. And my thing is, you've been through something like that. You've been through a situation like that. You should have went through all the steps to not repeat the same thing that's happening to you. It's, by exactly. You, you recreating generational curses. Any means at any level, even if it's the smallest of levels. You work to not let that shit happen to the next generation. And one thing I can say is some people do get some people do have kids get with a person that they feel like they might be lucky to be with. And you overlook a bunch of shit that you shouldn't. And that's kind of how I feel like Roscoe was coming in at number two. Why did I get married? Now, I'll be honest. Why did I get married? Damn near all the people except maybe Sheila are all some type of villain. When we look at this movie, every one of the couples are arguably some form of piece of shit within their relationships. 
they all contributed to each one of their households being in a mess. But that's not the aspect that I want to look at this time, at least. Why can't this single woman go out with this single man? Mm -hmm. Can we just drop this, please? I'm so agreeing with Diane right now. This scene right here to me is why Patricia and Diane are the real villains, bro. Look at it from a friend aspect. It's really no way y'all let a friend come to a cabin where y'all know she being cheated on and Buddy brought his mistress. I felt like Angela was a friend that would probably fight and would have whooped her in the ass for even trying to make it through that door. However, you got Diane and Patricia over here trying to suppress the whole thing. And to me, it was personally because they wanted to have a good time on their vacation. Man, fuck that vacation. No, as a matter of fact, let me get another drink so Mike can tell us why Trina can't go with Troy. I believe when you're friends and you, you don't let some shit like this happen, even if you don't like it, even if it can't cost you a vacation, having her sitting there knowing she getting cheated on is crazy to me. Facts. And to me, they kept trying to suppress Angela because they didn't want the drama and wanted to just enjoy their vacation. And to that, I say, hell no. Hell no. To the no, no, no. Hell to the no. So I'll ask y'all, if your friend had you sitting here looking stupid, knowing what's going on, knowing they sitting on their info, would you continue to be friends with them after the fact? Fuck no. I'll answer it for you. Hell no. And even if you chose to continue being friends with that, that person, that relationship wouldn't be close and you would probably fuck with them from a distance. Either which way, when you find out that your friend let you sit on some shit like that and didn't come to your defense or didn't let you know and let you go through that whole time, knowing that you was probably naive, once you find out, bro, that's going to change the way that you look at them. You're not going to feel the same. I'm just not going to believe it. Also, we already know Mike, the biggest villain. Obviously, bro. Y'all talking about me? Hmm? You put my secret out there. Let's put everybody's secret on the table, shall we? Nigga, no one else told your business but one person. You end up grabbing the K and spraying that motherfucker at everybody at the table. Facts. <laughs> bro, nobody, you didn't have to do this at all. Hey, Sheila, also, why would you tell any of these folks fucking business to someone you arguably know don't fuck with you like that that's strange behavior coming in at number one acrimony when it comes to this movie it's one of the worst tyler perry movies of all time <laughs> movie a bag of ass bro but i'll say that for my next trash video because it's it's going on a trash countdown hey i ain't mad at it though like i said in the beginning he had me in the beginning i was like hold on he might got one here. He might got one here with this one. Acrimony, he might got one here. Boy, after they divorce and he got successful, this movie went. <laughs> like, nigga, ain't no fucking. Shout out to Taraji. Shout out to my, uh, my Virgo sister. Her birthday just passed, by the way. Shout out to my Virgo sister, uh, Taraji, most definitely. My Virgo sister, Virgo gang, gang in the building, you already know. Gotta represent, gotta represent, you already know. But, Tarot, but, oh, the ending was terrible. The ending was terrible. How this movie ended was stupid. Because it went from, it went from a serious dramatic romance type of movie to a psycho bitch movie. Like, no, we don't need the psycho bitch at the end. That wasn't necessary. The characters were fine just the way they were. Shit, it's fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airway. I'm just going to try to keep this, like, I'm going to try and keep from ripping this whole movie apart just so I can save it. And have some content for that countdown. So I'll, I'll go to some of the arguments that usually come with this movie. Argument number one. She gave him everything. Ten million wasn't enough for the lost time. To that I say. Most people don't have a thousand dollars in their bank account. How in the fuck is ten million not enough for a person that ain't have nearly ten million in their account already? And if I'm being. Bruh, he gave her her mama house back and gave her ten million dollars so she can go off and do her own thing. Honest. Women make this argument, so it lets me know there's a line between crazy-ass women and sane women because a sane woman would probably still be pissed. But once she see all them zeros, she gladly go about her business, not care, and do what she's supposed to do in life. You can now wake up and do whatever you want to do. You ain't got to work. You got life-changing money. That's life-changing money. So you mean to tell me 
you're going to be worried about somebody that you just gave up on and chose to leave? That don't make sense. Argument number two, he used her. Y'all got to get the fuck out of here with that one. That argument, because if, if that's the case, women use men on a daily basis. <laughs> in reality, they were in a relationship. They were married and the gender roles were just reversed. She was the breadwinner supporting him while he was doing something that's not fucking normal. Also, he's doing something that's that, you know, can quite literally change y'all's life overnight. It wasn't like bro was a rapper and he was trash as hell. Traffic, traffic, looking for my chapstick, feeling kind of car sick. There's a poor maverick. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. <laughs> and he out, you know, trying to stay out all night at the club, knowing he ain't rapping. But he was a smart dude. And to me, the person that uses you still ain't staying for 20 plus years. They damn sure ain't writing you a $10 million check after you made the decision to leave when they didn't want you to. Facts. Sound like he had her part of the plan the whole time. Like, literally. It seemed... She, she, she went for the divorce too early. Got in her feelings. She lost a man her, She lost a man that really was fucking with her. That's the thing. That's another thing, too, that a lot of women don't understand is, like, when you got a nigga that's just riding for you, you gotta you gotta at least have some type of understanding of I got a nigga that's gonna ride for me. Pause, no diddy. You got you you gotta understand that you got a nigga riding for you to the very fucking end till the wheels fall off. He don't see nothing wrong with you. He just happy that you in his life. And it's never good enough. It's never good enough. Apparently, it, it's today's day and age. It's never good enough. It's never good enough to just be in love. He's sad. It seemed like he was going to make her be straight in life regardless. Another argument. He's the reason she can't have a baby. My nigga, was we watching the same movie? Because it looked like to me she can't have kids because she did some crazy shit because she couldn't control herself. You tried to kill two niggas. I'm just saying. <laughs> then y'all say some of this shit like they were just boyfriend and girlfriend. Man, these folks was married and took vows. They both supposed to have each other. Yes, bro did cheat. When they, when he was in college, they was young. You decided to stay with this man and you spent 20 plus years with him knowing what he was doing. When you're doing something unconventional like that, it, to me, it's just kind of like YouTube, bro. It could take you two years. It could take you a year. Also, it can be a overnight situation. You knew that even when he was talking to you about the battery. Whenever that battery hit, it's going to be a wrap. Y'all going to be rich, which is why when you was trying to leave, bro, bro didn't want you to leave. Also, I also think that no amount of money should have made her want him back. However, when that battery did hit, she immediately wanted bro again, acting like she didn't give up. Another argument. No one wants to see the man that they gave everything to give it to the next girl. Then why did she break up with him? Yeah, that would make sense if he broke up with you and that's exactly what happened. But that's not that's not really what happened. You broke up with him. And first off, when you break up with someone, you saying you done. Why in the fuck would you assume that the dream you had or the dream y'all had was only yours? What did you expect that man to do? Not get with someone else? That's a stupid ass argument. Also, that crazy ass line comes up again. One that is crazy will ignore the fact that she was listening to her garbage ass sisters that weren't happy even in their own relationships. Y'all will keep sitting right here bringing up everything that he did wrong when in all actuality they was just in a relationship. However, y'all won't sit right here and acknowledge how she totally fucking played herself listening to people that's unhappy. You know, being in a relationship and listening to unhappy people, it's only gonna make you unhappy. Facts. I mean, both of you are some miserable bitches. Neither one of you are happy with these bastards. And I listen to you. Yep, and she knew damn well she messed up. And gave up too early based off letting the wrong motherfuckers in your ear. Now, could Buddy have, have gotten another job while he was with her? Yeah, he probably could have. Yes, but she allowed some of that shit. Should he have, have cheated on her when they were younger? Nah, he shouldn't. That was wrong. It ain't never no excuse for that. But I believe intentions are everything. And I think making it successful and giving her that 10 mil, keep, keep in mind, he went and found her to give her that 10 mil. He didn't want them to break up. His intentions were clearly always to have her a part of the plan. So when y'all make this argument that he did her dirty, Burke gave her poor ass 10 million and the house back. He made up for everything that he lost except time. But you got 10 million, bro. Shut the man, bro. All right, bro. Y'all gonna make me mad. I think it's a lot more to talk about with this movie. Um, 
I'm definitely gonna put this on the trash countdown. I think TP set us back 400 years with this one. <laughs> hey, shout out to DD Conway, though, most definitely, man. Oh, man, Acrobody. Oh, oh. We, 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 we could go all fucking day on that one, man. But anyways, I just going to about do it for this one. I will see you all in the next video. Most definitely, man. Shout out to the homie DD Conway. I will see you all in the next one. Till then, peace out.